Hi guys, this is Kevin from my subdivision. Um, I just wanted to throw together a quick uh, video on our subdivision calculator that you can find at the my subdivision website. Um, so basically, the calculator is um, designed to spit out a report uh, for a two or a three lot subdivision, and we've tried to factor in all of the things you know that come up on a typical subdivision for water corporation western power surveying fees project management fees um you know your plumber electrician fees fencing um you know demolition removal of uh you know carports on the sides of buildings construction of driveways you name it we have tried to roll it into this calculator now, I'm not aware of anything like this in Australia. We done our research on this and we're thinking about it for a long time about how we could you know, put this puzzle together um, in a way that made sense. And it's important to mention that it's very, very difficult to do this. Um, and the, the calculator is not perfect. It does not have every single scenario for subdivision covered. It doesn't cover rural subdivisions. It doesn't cover anything above three lots. Um, and there's just, there's subdivision is so varied in what's required that you couldn't possibly, uh, you know, cover everything. And if you did, the calculator would be just ridiculously detailed with too many options and you would essentially get bored or more than likely get bored and just leave. And I know this because when we were designing this calculator, we went through the motions with it. We redesigned it and redesigned it multiple different ways. And it was very difficult to come up with something that made sense um, and ticked all the boxes for people, you know, again, without people are so, you know, people are flicking through websites and, um, you know, on their mobile phone and, and their their uh, computers so quickly these days. People are very impatient. They want to find what they want to find quickly and easily. And the more things that we added to the report, the more complicated it became and the less you wanted to use it. So in the end, this was the final product that we came up with. A lot of testing, a lot of going back to the drawing board. Um, and we think we figured out a solution that makes sense. So here it is, and I'm going to walk you through it now and uh, explain a few things. So starting over here on the report section on the side, you basically punch in your details, name, mobile contact number, address. This is basically so you can send the report to yourself, but it's also going to send a report to us. Naturally, um, if we have um, people using our tools or free tools, we want to be able to monitor what people are doing. We're not spying on people, but we want to be able to track how many people are using the report. We want to see that what areas people are subdividing in. It's a it's a, you know it's a marketing tool for us and an information building tool as well. So we get a copy of the report. And that's of great benefit to the client because if we see that you have input something into the report, we get loads of emails where the reports are coming through. And, you know, I, I try my best to check them all. And sometimes I find things where people have put the wrong information in and the report is either too low, the, the, the cost is too low or it's way too high and people have made mistakes. Um, so I'll go through those reports, um, you know, regularly. And if, if I see something that doesn't look right, I'll reach out to that person and I will send them an email back going, look, I don't think you've done the report right. You've added this in or you haven't added this in and it's affecting the overall cost of the report. OK, now, before I get too stuck into the report, I want to explain or the calculator. Sorry, I want to explain kind of what it is and what it is is it's inbuilt values so we have we project manage so many subdivisions we know what things cost we know what things cost at the height of the market and you know on the low end of the market when things aren't really busy and when things are really busy and what electricians and plumbers and demo companies charge at the different stages you know of of of, of the property market um Obviously, you know, in, in a market like we're in at the moment in 2021, 2022, it's absolutely crazy. The prices are through the roof. Everything is more expensive than it was two years ago. So what we've done here is 
rather than pick the highest price that we see now, we, we, we change the values in the report from time to time to reflect current costs based on what we're assigned to seeing. But what we've kind of done now is just come up with a solution we believe is better where um, we're kind of taking the average uh, price that we were seeing in 2020 and the uh, the average price we're seeing now and we're you know building those values into the report um, we are overestimating on a few things to make sure that you cover yourself because if we look at demolition for example a typical demolition cost you know for a standard house on an 800 square meter block will be probably 16 to 17 thousand dollars um in the current market maybe a bit more but depending on you know what's on site um whether you have a lot of retaining walls or a swimming pool or a much bigger house the the cost can go up um and then go up significantly as well so with, with something like demolition we instead of rounding it off at sixteen thousand seventeen thousand dollars we see demolition jobs coming through at twenty-two thousand dollars. So what we've done is we've just rounded it off at twenty thousand um, dollars, you know, and we think that's a good round number to work with. And what we like to think, or we hope, will be will be that when you get your report out, the the cost for demolition that's itemized in that quote will be probably lower than that. But the good thing about the the report is is that the report overestimates slightly in specific you know items, um, and that allows you to plan hopefully for a worst case scenario. That's not to say that the twenty thousand dollars demolition that the report is telling you about isn't going to come out and end up being thirty. You know you've you've got to do your own due diligence and reach out to you know demolition contractors and get those quotes yourself. Okay, so you know always keep a contingency plan in place. If you're doing a subdivision, always keep about ten thousand dollars. You know on top of what you're estimating to allow for you know um, any unforeseen circumstances. Okay, so. Going back to the report, uh, we're going down through it here. We punch in the information. Um, you know, the lot size doesn't matter. You can just, if you know it, you, you know it. If you don't, don't worry about it. The next one is the subdivision type. You pick the option that you're, you're doing. It's very straightforward. Corner block, rear lot, side by side or rear laneway. That's where you have a, a subdivision facing onto two streets. Um, or, you know, you might have a, a street at the front and a laneway at the back and you're splitting the block across the middle. The rear battle axe option covers for two things. It covers for, uh, you know, a, a, a rear lot subdivision where you have a common driveway, a shared driveway, and then it also covers for if you have a battle axe. And a battle axe is basically, <coughs> excuse me, a battle axe is, is where the rear lot has exclusive use of the driveway. And this can be a huge deciding factor on, on the costs of the subdivision because when you have a common property driveway, in a lot of shires you're required to construct that driveway some you do some you don't it's it's kind of case by case and sometimes you can even argue your way out of constructing a driveway and i'm not going to get too into how you do that that's a topic for another video um where we might look at a case study but you know for now just assume that if you are you know going to construct a common property shared driveway with the front and the rear block then you might have to construct a common property you know a driveway where you put down paving or concrete and install some drainage on that driveway so if we just look at rear battle axe as an example if you click on rear battle axe and you hit the drop down menu underneath this is the next step you've got to select your house and driveway options and this option is critical that you pick this right because this is going to factor in different values into the report to that will 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 give you the total fee at the end so if you make the wrong choice here well then it's going to give you the wrong value in the report so this is a very important part this drop down menu um and you know before i i go into that depending on which of these you select will change the options here so corner block will give you different options corner block do you want to retain the house remove the house or is there no existing house each one of those things that you select will have a different um, outcome in your report um, let's just do side by side again retain house remove house no existing house and the rear laneway so, retain house remove house no existing house so they're all the same they're quite straightforward it's when you're doing rear lot subdivisions the you have more options so if you click on rear battle axe and then you select your driveway options now you're going to see three of them in a row 
um, six options but three in a row shared driveway retain house shared driveway remove house shared driveway remove garage that's where you're removing a garage that's connected to a building that is you know that garage when you remove it will allow the access leg go into the rear block um, and the three, three options underneath that again are no shared driveway which is a battle axe that's where the rear lot owns their own driveway so no shared driveway retain house no shared driveway remove house and no shared driveway remove garage and um, you know it might be a little bit confusing for some people those options now but just remember if you select shared driveway remove house for example so we're going to do a common property driveway where we're sharing the driveway with the front and the back house watch the report watch the report in the next tabs over here when i select that watch what happens so we're going to go share driveway remove house that's we're going to demolish the house and we're going to do a shared driveway here we go watch this now things have changed over here it has now added two values it's added demolition and it's added a common property driver construction and obviously because it's added those things in at the final report at the end it's going to calculate all of these things together and it's going to change the outcome of the report if you go back in here again and you go share driveway remove garage over here demolition disappears and now you're looking at a partial demolition which we allow ten thousand dollars for but we retain the common driveway construction now if we go down to these options underneath here where there's no shared driveway and you're retaining a house when you do no shared driveway and you do a battle axe generally you don't have to construct the driveway for the rear house some shires you do city of gosnells can 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 make you construct that driveway you know whether it's with paving or a crushed limestone base or something they will make you do that i don't understand why they do that it doesn't make any sense i can understand the logic of building a driveway a common driveway because when you do a subdivision you get a condition in in a lot of cases where you have a common driveway you get a condition from the shire where they want the developer to build a driveway and drain it at their own cost and that's why we just factor in the dr common driveway construction when we do a shared driveway because we're planning for you having to construct a driveway maybe you won't but we're going to plan that you will in the report so that you can budget around that but look at this if we select no shared driver we're that confident in probably 80 to 90 percent of cases that if you do not have a shared driveway you have access to the front house on a separate driveway and you you are you are selling the rear block with its own access um, and it's a battle axe if you click no shared driveway retain house keep the house the, those options over there uh, they, they disappear for the driveway the common driver construction is now gone we are removing that from the equation because we think you will not need to do it now whether you will need to do it or not is completely up to your own investigation your own due diligence or whether you engage someone like us to manage the subdivision for you as i said city of gosnells we have done a battle axe before over there where you know the most recent one i can remember where they were asking us to construct the driveway for the rear block um, and we just couldn't get our heads around why they wanted that so anyway it is what it is you just have to work in with what they require now if we go back one more and go um no share driveway remove house as you can see the driveway option has disappeared over here but we have now factored in demolition okay so very straightforward well hopefully now moving up to the next section so just again before i move on these selections through here this selection is critical you have to go through these options pick the one you're going to do then go through these options to really fine tune the report now going on to easier stuff over here how many lots are we creating well we've only got three three uh, two to three lots and just quickly to summarize this um you know we only go to three lots if you're doing four lots or five lots you're in the wrong place um you're not in the wrong place in the sense of you can get information on this website in 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 how you can create four five six ten lots for a subdivision it's just that the calculator cannot plan for anything over three blocks because the requirements for a subdivision uh, where you go over three blocks go get significantly more difficult and i'm not going to get too into that right now um I, I will keep that for another video as well but you need lots more stuff retaining walls major earthworks you know more more work with services there's just way more work and i'm not going to be you know 
getting my company into disputes with people about how um, the, the reports that we're spitting out are unreliable and are not um, anywhere near what their project cost. With this, we can get you close. Two to three lots, we can get you close. And even the the two lots, we can get you very, very close to what you're going to, your, your project's going to cost. But the three lots, and a, you know, um, a disclaimer here, the three lots, we we can only get you roughly in the ballpark. And that again is because if you, can, if you, can, if you connect or um, if you click on three blocks here or three lots, it will factor in an earthworks requirement. And you know, generally when you go to tree blocks in, in any area, you, you, you will more than likely have to do some type of earthworks to get the blocks ready. Not always, but some shires you will. Um, now, depending on how big that block is, depending on how much soil needs to be moved around, replaced, or whatever it might be, and the, the amount of retaining that needs to be done, that we have allowed a fee of $20,000 for, for earthworks. But let me be super clear. When you do earthworks and retaining on, on, on a subdivision, that $20,000 could turn into forty dollars in a heartbeat. It just depends. There are so many variables in, 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 in earthworks and, and variables which can affect the costs of the earthworks that you cannot plan for them. You, you cannot plan for that at an early stage when you're looking at a report like this. So again we've looked at some earthworks costs and projects we've worked on over the last few years that were kind of relatively straightforward projects and we were seeing anything kind of between 15 on the low end that would be very low um up to kind of 30 to 40 and just to kind of you know to get people in in, in a, just a rough ballpark without scaring them off we've just allowed twenty thousand dollars for earthworks here Okay, and when you click on, if you click on a two lot subdivision, that option is removed because in most two lot subdivisions, you're not required to do earthworks. Some you are, um, there are things that affect a subdivision that make you do retaining and then earthworks on two lot subdivisions in certain areas in Perth, but in the majority of cases, you can get away with it. And if you do it in the right way um, as well, you can get away with it. So we've removed that option because what we found was when we, lot, when we, when we had people selecting a two lot subdivision, those people were going down to here. We had Earthworks left as an optional choice. Okay, originally Earthworks was an optional choice um, on a two lot subdivision. Um, but people were clicking on it so we decided to remove it from the two lot option because I believe in 80% of cases you will not need to do earthworks on a two lot subdivision you know um, different people might have different opinions on that but you know we're doing 90 to 100 subdivisions a year now so I'm pretty confident in, in, in that statement now once you jump up to the three lot subdivision um, you will need to start considering earthworks at least and then you know, we have left it as optional here because we, we, we do want people to click on it. But if they decide not to click on it, then that's up to them. But we would prefer that you clicked on this if you're doing a tree lot subdivision. And, and naturally, that's going to factor in, um, uh, you know, a, uh, a, a, an earthworks component and a, and a value into the final calculation. Okay, so coming back up here, um, I just kind of wanted to touch on the earthworks part as because the... the, the <clears throat> that's the only unknown in there i guess when you're going from two to three lots you know you you kind of need to understand that earthworks may or may not be required so we'll just jump back up here again <clears throat> we we'll just stick with three lots for now to keep this option in the picture, remembering that if you went to two lots, that would disappear. So let's just go back, keep that in. Um, so here, basically, surveying fee. Um, do, do you want us or, you know, um, potentially another company to basically do just surveying for you or, just, or do project management for you? We do both. We're a land surveying company first and foremost. That's who we are. Um, my subdivision is a part of Zenith Land Surveyors and, you know, Zenith Surveyors is the parent company and my subdivision is is another brand that runs underneath zenith surveying so i want to be very clear that we are land surveyors um and uh, we offer project management um as a separate service as well so you know some people know um what they want to do now the great thing about this report is it's discreet but if you click on any one of these little icons here these things it actually gives you an explanation of what it is and you know basically will give you a little bit of advice on on maybe how and what to choose okay so if we just go down onto onto this next one for example 
it'll explain the difference between surveying and project management. So some people kind of want to know that. Now, it's very hard to break it all down because there's a huge difference between project management and uh, owner managed subdivision. Um, so, you know, a lot of people will come in here and they'll pick owner managed and then they'll you know send themselves a report and then they'll end up following up with us with a call and then once we break down what's required and you know lay it all out in front of them some people will end up jumping over here to this one um and going right well you know we we we, we like the idea of managing it but there's uh, it sounds like there's a bit much involved there and we'd like you to project manage it and in a in in you know probably the majority of cases people actually go owner managed subdivision which we love to see we love people managing their own subdivisions and we love to help them with with doing that so again it's just an option and what this is going to do is whatever you choose here it's going to affect the fee that comes out at the end because obviously if we are project managing the costs are going to be higher because we're we're if you're owner managing you're doing a lot of groundwork as the owner manager and we're acting as a consultant in the background but when you go project management we take over a hundred percent so now we're doing all of the surveying component but we're project managing as well we're managing all the trades the whole project strategy you know we're looking at all the risk everything across the project so it's obviously going to be a little bit more expensive for that so let's just say let's just go owner managed here the next one here is western power fees this is really important guys and it's very simple depending on whether you need a western power dome installed in your block will depend on on what it costs if you already have a western power dome installed on your block a green dome out at your front boundary the easiest thing to do here is to just click on this one power pole on your side of the road what that's essentially doing is is it's 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 factoring in a three thousand five hundred dollar fee that you will have to pay you'll have to pay three thousand dollars of that regardless okay or two and a half thousand dollars or something of that of that fee of that western power fee you will need to pay this really western power fees this this question here or these choices essentially are just western power fees that you will pay but if you need to install a power dome then you will need to pay if the power pole is on the same side of the road as you and you can do that by simply going out and looking if you see a power pole on the same side of the road as you and you need to install a new power dome because you're on overhead power click on this if you go outside and you have no power dome and you look outside you're on your verge and the closest power pole is on the far side of the road click on this and again, if you walk outside and you have a power dome already installed on your block, just click on this one, okay? You won't have to pay all of this, but you'll have to pay a large percentage of it. So rather than add a third option in here for if you have already have a power dome, which would just, you know, make the, the calculator more clumsy and, and again, more confusing for people we have just we're just we're just explaining to people and we explain it in here again what you need to do so um i hope that all makes sense so let's say we're on doing tree lot subdivision let's just click on the earthworks option okay but again if we had done two lots um you know you wouldn't be looking at that you'd be going straight to fencing so just go back to tree lots we're going to include that the fencing, okay, this is an easy one. We give it an explanation of how this works here. Um, you can basically go to a mapping system, uh, Google Earth, okay, you can just go there and you can just, um, you, you can just click where you think the fence line would go on your property just roughly all you need is a rough value so if you go to this 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 um actual uh, follow this link and you bring up your address there's a it explains what you need to do here it's super easy there's a ruler on the page and you can just click on the different points where you think the fence would go and then at the end of that it will give you a distance let's say it's 30 meters that you think of fencing you'll need to separate the two blocks you will just put 30 meters in there okay and it we're allowing 80 dollars per linear meter okay that's roughly what it is in the current market that could drop down and be 70 dollars in a year from now or it could be higher i don't know so we're just allowing 30 meters and it's going to be 80 dollars per meter and it's going to calculate it out at the end okay and the last option here 
bitumen crossover. Now, if you have a bitumen crossover outside of your house where your driveway ends at the front boundary and then that section that joins the driveway to the to the actual road, that's called a crossover. It's not yours. You might think it's yours, but it's not. It's actually the council's. The council own that. Even if you installed it, doesn't matter. They own it. Okay. So again, the strip of concrete or bitumen that comes from the road up to your front fence line is called a crossover. And when you do a subdivision, if you have a bitumen crossover, then that will need to be removed. Okay. It needs to be decommissioned and removed. That'll be a condition of your subdivision. When you remove that, you're probably going to need a new one. Okay. Um, so, you know, we kind of allow roughly about two thousand dollars for the removal of a bitumen crossover um and this and the installation of a new concrete crossover so even though we're not saying anything about installation of a new concrete crossover we just kind of i guess need people to kind of understand that you know it, you only take this option if you have a bitumen crossover OK, but by ticking this option, you're essentially ticking for that bitumen crossover to be removed and then reinstated with a new concrete one, which is probably what you're going to require to meet council requirements. It might be a brick crossover. So whichever it is, it is. It's all about pointing out the fact that you need to get rid of that bitumen crossover, you know. So let's just include it. Now, over here, the calculator based on all of the things that you have selected through here the type of subdivision you're doing. Um, there are a couple of things which are left out here which only get sent to you in the report when you get the report. This report is free. You know, people send this report to themselves and we never hear from them again. It's just to get you in the ballpark. It's to, it's to lay out some stuff in front of you where you can see some realistic things. And we're very proud of this report. This, 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 this idea has been years in the making. But actually realizing it and putting it together in a way that made sense um, was very, very, very difficult to do and very, very expensive to build. This This one page of this website was very, very expensive to build. But we're happy we done it because the money we spent on this on this one page is now allowing people for free to get realistic reports back on what their subdivision might cost because up until we built this there was nothing out there and there still is nothing available where you can generate these types of numbers on on a report everything out there is just generic it's all about you know you click in google you type in subdivision costs it just brings you to a web page where there's some generic values laid out on the page. You may or may not know what they are or you may or may not know whether you need them. And at the end of it, it gives you nothing. It doesn't give you a total. It's just giving you numbers. Um, you know, we, we see stuff where people actually on their websites are writing subdivision calculator. You get to the page. It's not there. This is the only subdivision calculator in Australia that we we that we know about and happy to be corrected on that. But at the point where we were building this calculator, there was nothing available. Now you can get this report, which will lay out WAPC fees, the Western Australian Planning Commission, local government fees, plumbing fees, water corporation fees. And this is super important to know, guys, if you click on two lots, that water corp fee will change. If you click on three lots, it will change. Um, you know, depending on what you click as you move through this report will have a, a huge effect on, on this, this, this calculator. And that's why you need to take time doing it. And I'll summarize everything by saying that's why I made this video, because we see a lot of reports coming through which just look wrong. And it makes it, it puts us in a position where we have to reach out to people um, and give them feedback on the report. And I don't necessarily want to do that, and I don't have time to do it. Um, you know, uh, right now we're not chasing everyone up who who this because this as again this report gets sent to us, but we're not chasing people up. You know, a week later, going, "Hey, how are you? This is Kevin from my subdivision. How did that report go?" We're not doing that at the moment. Um, uh, you know, but 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 the report is just about getting the information out to you, um, so that basically you can see what's on there. And uh, you know, if 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 something doesn't look right on the report, we will try and contact you to point it out to you. And um, but what I'm really trying to say is here is take your time going through the report. 
pick, you know, pick the things carefully because they will affect the final cost. And again, that's why I made this video so that people could do the report and make their own decisions, get these reports sent to them without anyone following them up and hounding them and harassing them, you know, which is what companies tend to do. This is about you getting free information and making a decision yourself um, on your subdivision um, and, and, and getting information that can be relied upon so that you can plan your project, hopefully, um, and get all of your, uh, your costs and ducks in a row um, before you engage anyone. Um, so yeah, I, I hope this video, it's quite long, it's 29 minutes, it's one of our longer videos, but I really hope that it helps you uh, to understand the report better and um, you know get something that you can rely on. Thank you.